everyone, Will here from Mature Minded Gamers, and today I'm going to be diving into another champion for Super Fantasy Brawl, a game that I am looking forward to very much from Mythic Games, should be released later this fall. We are looking at the game currently on Tabletopia. It should be, as close as I'm aware, the final version of these cards for the actual release of the game itself. I want to take some time and go into each of the characters, kind of show you what the final look of each of those cards are going to be. What you may see as far as like combinations, I'd love to have you comment on any specific character that you think would be a good combo and uh, just kind of have a general discussion. You could always join me on Discord as well. You can hit me up for a game on there. I'd love to join you on Tabletopia for a game. So let's go ahead and dive into today's champion spotlight. We are going to be looking at Korvash, Wielder of Scornblade. A very, very awesome looking orc here. I love the banner he has on his back. I love the huge blade that he has. Uh, got a standee represented here, but he will have a 3D model in the actual game itself. He has uh, zero armor as well as eight health. So not very defensive, but a lot of health there to be able to stay alive. When he does level up, his stats change just slightly. He has now zero armor still, but also nine health, so went up by one. Also, Corvash's attacks ignore defense if the target is bloodied. Now, one of the champions I recently kind of did a look at on was uh, Moros. And I thought that, you know, man, you know, I don't know how he would kind of combo. But, man, if you have Korvash and you're going up against him, oh, look out. I mean, Marius is just going to just just get decimated by Korvash. So it's all about, you know, maybe they're a great combo. I'd love to hear if you guys have played these two together or, you know, who's a good champion that combos with Korvash. But let's go ahead and dive down to each of the cards, take a look at what each of them do, and see if we can find out any good strategies. All right, so first off, we have a skill card called Shockwave. It gives one movement a melee-style skill. Push one and then stun. So, hmm, kind of more of just a positioning, getting someone out of a specific area. And then the stun ability could be pretty awesome, limiting the cards that are able to be played on an opponent's turn. If you could stun three times in a round, that could be absolutely huge because that really only gives them the basic cores and maybe two cards to play with. So hopefully. But uh, awesome, awesome card. Kind of a good start with, uh, with what we're going to be seeing here on Korvash. Next up, we have Hell Hath No Fury. All right, so this is a attack card. It gives two movement. It is a two range attack with three power. After the attack, the target is bloodied. It suffers force one. So if you deal three damage and if the attacker is bloodied, man, four. So that's going to let you move them around the board as well. So, so far we've seen two cards that are having the ability of moving characters, opponent's characters, that is. So, but this one definitely requires bloodied where this one doesn't. Hmm. And this one's going to ignore defense here. So man, if they're bloodied already, and if they if they don't die based on this attack, I mean they gotta have a lot of health if they're not already dead. But man, three damage that that should be killing a lot of champions. Not all of them, but I mean it should really be weakening some guys. Maybe moving them into a trap would be the coup de grace and just kind of finish them off. All right, next up we've got a, yet another attack card, and this one is huge. So this one is probably the biggest one in the game. So imagine this: you get. Korvash in, you know, and you move him in. Maybe Kilgarth throws him into a certain spot on the board, and it hits everyone surrounding Korvash. It has in and of itself zero power, but the great thing about it is this attack gains plus two power for each target. Now, remember, your champions are technically char targets as well. So, I mean, if you think about it, this could be pretty brutal to be able to getting some massive, massive hits on certain champions. So, I mean, even if you have you have three enemy champions maybe here in a line or you get them in between, you know, some enemy champions, that's still six per. 
So, I mean, can you imagine six damage for each champion on the board? That is just crazy. Absolutely crazy of how powerful this card is. So, definitely a character that uh, that can really dish out some damage. You really want to be careful where Korvash is on the map. Now, he's got to be in that position already because if you notice, this doesn't give him any movement. So, that's kind of the limitation. I can kind of see what they did on that one. All right, next up, we have Leaping Strike. This one is going to allow you to move one melee attack for three and then before the attack jump. So really move one, jump, and then melee and then hit for three. So if you can move, jump with this leap right into position and then throw down this chop card. I mean, that's a great way to be able to get him where he needs to be with a total of uh, three movement with a jump. So completely feasible there. Um, I'd love to see. I'd love to see that actually played out. All right, next up, we have Korvash's reaction card called Blood Curdling Roar. The art is awesome on this one. I love, love the art on this one. Uh, it gives two armor, which is really good for a defensive card. And then also, after the attack, if the attacker is bloody, ignore any post-attack effects. So some some definite benefits on this one. Probably a Probably one of the best one of the best uh, defense cards, but it does have to have the attacker being bloody to really get the full effect. But this plus two is still absolutely amazing. And if you notice, I mean, his blue car, his blue core, I mean, this, this is okay, but it's not really going to be, you know, game changing for what the two cores are for him specifically. So you would really want to save the blue cores for that card. All right, next up, we have a, another attack card. This one is called sap strength. You know, or it looks okay. I'm not a, as huge of a fan of this one as I was the others. But this gives you two movement with a linear attack of two. Uh, hex line, that is, with two power. If the target is bloodied, this attack gains plus two. So another plus four on the attack. So if you notice here, we've got a kind of a theme with these two cards. You know, the, excuse me, these three cards that are going to be if the attacker is bloodied. So, you know, or just... So many options. Well, these ones are the attacker, this target. But, man, a bloodied is really a theme on him. So, really dishing out some damage. Two of his attacks are threes. This one's going to be a possibility of four. And then this one, obviously, a much bigger possibility here. So, wow. This has so many potentials for Kovash to be one of the big champions of the game. It's all about separating if you're playing up against Corvus you definitely don't want to be surround or you know bunched up your characters you kind of want to be spread out so you want to really be careful of where you're positioning your team especially if you're trying to control a certain zone like the creation zone where it's got three only three hexes unfortunately you kind of got to bunch them up but man if you get if you get Corvash on the path man you got to watch out because that could be pretty dangerous so I'd really love to get a game with you guys, so please join us on our Discord. Hit that like and subscribe button when you want to be notified about all of our other great Super Fantasy Brawl content. Join us at the table. We'd love to have you join us.